So now, now, now just if I hold it for a second, then it's in my hands as well. <laughs> so I think we can start. You start. I don't want to start. OK. So hey, guys. Um, thank you all for coming to our session. Uh, it's called No Redeploys. And that there's, there's somewhere I can see echo. Are you echoing me? Uh, I just might be. I can turn it off. Uh, I don't know about that, but OK. So uh, I'm Evgeny Kabanov. I'm CEO of Zero Turnaround, uh, a very cool company, which you probably have heard about. And this is Thomas Romer. He's our director of engineering and resident geek. And we're going to talk to you about uh, two of our products, <coughs> namely Jarable and Liveable. And one thing I want to say up front is that um, all of my other talks, I always uh, went to great effort to be sure uh, that, they, that, that the talks are not you know, just a product pitch. And so. I display you a fair warning <laughs> that this time it's different. So uh, this time we decided that we, we do have a, a great story to tell about our products, and we decided to actually make a product pitch and see how that works. But I promise you that the products are awesome, and you, they'll be useful for you. So that, uh, but in any case, you know, if, if you don't want to hear a product pitch, then this is the right time to walk out of the door and go to the other talk, which hopefully isn't a product pitch. <laughs> and. Uh, OK, nobody's going. Yes, <laughs> my evil plan have worked. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, to, like, both development and production. And first, we're going to start with development. Uh, so in development, we have this thing called a turnaround cycle, uh, where you make a change, you know, uh, then you build, deploy, wait, and then you actually see the change in your browser wherever. So this is you know, what we call the turnaround cycle. And this is actually kind of the reason for the name of the company, Zero Turnaround, because what we do, uh, at least what our flagship product, Jarable, does, is eliminate uh, this red stuff, uh, the, all, the, all the kind of the waiting stuff, so that you can just build and, sorry, so that you can make a change and see the change, right? Um, so maybe you can show a very quick uh, like a demo of Jarable. We, we, we really believe that uh, you know the only justice to a product is to show a demo because everything else is okay. uh, um, nearly as cool. I'm the demo stuntman. Um, I'll start with the simpler one. You start with the simple one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Some 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 second mic is definitely on. I understand what's going on. I can turn off mine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Great to see a out of memory error already, but luckily it's from another process. So let me find my Tomcat. Um, I'm going to start up my Tomcat here uh, with a special flag. So there's a uh, Java agent attached to my Tomcat. And I'm going to start this up here like this. So this, this agent will tell you that it's, it's enabled. But otherwise, it starts up as, as you would expect. Um, I have an application deployed there. I think the port is, yep, there it is. And the application is Pet Clinic. So it's a sample application from uh, Spring. So it's Spring I.O., you know. I think we have always have, uh, have had Spring demos. Uh, OK, so there's a form. There's some validation going on. Also, what I've set up here is Eclipse. Um, and in Eclipse, I have a build automatically enabled. So when, whenever I save in this demo, it will compile in the background. And there's also a file called a uh, Rebel XML file, which has a couple of lines. Uh, there's a class path tag that says that look for classes from a uh, bin folder. Okay, I'm ready for your demo itself. So let's go get back to the application. There's this validation going on here. First name is required. And uh, once you have this agent uh, configured and then you have this XML in place, what you can do is you can go to the code. For example, take this first name validation here comment this out, 
click save, go back, and the first name is no longer required. Or take these three guys here, refactor these into a new method. I'll call this method validate some fields. I was just I'll go to this uh, new method. I was just calling the method. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna comment out the last name. Click save, go back, and uh, last name is no longer required. Or let's say I want to add a flag here. Wow. Let's add a flag here. If this flag is true, uh, then validate the address. And let's set this flag to false. Go back. And address is no longer required. And usually, mm. uh, <laughs> uh, after a demo, I can just undo save and I'm back to uh, back to square one. What's what's happening in the background is that here's the Tomcat uh, standard output, and it's saying that. Uh, JRevel is reloading it fast. Uh, so what, what happened was that we, we didn't uh, redeploy the application behind the scenes or, or anything, but we, we actually just took the new bytecode from the new class files that Eclipse compiled. Um, okay, but this is uh, just like part of the uh, reloading. There, the we're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it. But first we're gonna go through a few. Uh, it's like <laughs> it, it's like there's a you know this some some weird thing going between us. If you come too close, then yes, that happens. <laughs> okay, um, let's try the slides for a sec. Woohoo! So you know that that was a very very simple demo. So actually. Uh, if, if you, so first of all, Thomas is a resident geek, so of course he w did things the hard way. Uh, actually, uh, you know, you don't have to write uh, any kind of uh, this shell script, so you don't have to, uh, you don't actually have to uh, write this Rebel XML because our, if you install it in Eclipse, so IntelliJ IDEA or in NetBeans, then we have plugins which will basically generate all of that for you, so you just have to press, you know, you basically have to start your application and press a checkbox that it starts with a gerable. Um, but generally, if you, if you happen to know, then uh, some ideas actually have a little bit of this, you know, update on the fly uh, mechanism. It's called hot swap, which actually allows you to edit method bodies. So the first thing that you want to know about Gerable, it's actually when reloading code, and it's much more powerful than uh, the typical hot swap you get in the ID. So you can also add uh, methods, constructors, fields, classes, annotations, all of these things work. Uh, the second thing you probably want to want to know about uh, terrible, sorry, uh, is that you know kind of the way it works is that it really runs an agent, and then if something changes, then uh, the new code is being deployed. But uh, if the configuration changes, so you know your, your classes don't exist uh, for a long time; they don't exist in <laughs> in vacuum. <laughs> okay, uh, what just happened? <laughs> So, so actually, you know, every, every single object today in Java, you know, you have some, like e even talking about Spring, then you have the, you know, bean, but bean is configured. So there's like a bunch of configuration which tells actually what is wired in and how is it, how is it deployed in, when it's actually at runtime. So, so everything exists in configuration. So actually, Gerable is smart enough that uh, when the uh, configuration changes, then actually it also will, uh, will update the configuration. So a simple example of that, if you add a spring bean and inject it into another spring bean, then Gerable will actually auto wire everything and it all happens, you know, it all happens automatically, it all happens uh, on the fly. So you don't have to pause even for a second. So it's always like just, you know, edit code, alt tab, refresh, there it is, right? So, so that, that's kind of the cool part. And, uh, you know, the way it works is that we integrate with the whole damn world uh, and we have our own this class reloading mechanism. So we have plugins for all frameworks, we have plugins for all containers, we have plugins for all IDs and build tools, and bringing it all together, you know, for you it's a very simple installation, basically in Eclipse, for example, and in IntelliJ IDEA, it's a one, one click install, you just go to Eclipse Marketplace or to the IntelliJ IDEA, this, uh, whatever they call it, uh, plugins repository, you know, press it, click on it, and that's it, you have Gerable installed and it's working. Uh, a lot of guys are already using Gerable. Uh, we have over 20,000 users in all kinds of uh, companies. My favorite one is Apple, obviously. Uh, and, you know, we, uh, we have kind of a cool counter that we prevented over 50 uh, million 
uh, redeploy so far, and that's kind of counting on our homepage, so that's pretty cool. But how about Tom will show you, you know, something really awesome, right? So that was kind of a small demo and a really uh, a quick description of what our product does, but now let's go in the, you know, in the real demo and try to do something complicated. Okay, I'm gonna turn off now. I'm gonna dance now. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, let's start with the, um, or let's continue with the previous demo. Uh, we, we have this uh, form with the validation. And uh, let's say I want to, uh, want to map this to a new URL here. Uh, so add owner new instead of the, the previous one. Uh, I can go to the, uh, I think it's, let's see. Owner form was it? Test that. Let me think. Okay, I can probably find it here. Who's calling validate? Oh, add owner form. So, Good. thank you. So, so there's the request mapping. It's the previous one. When I change this, sorry, to new and click save go back and refresh. Then I have this uh, configured on a new URL. So when, when changing configuration files, uh, either the XML or uh, the, well, the annotations, uh, it, it's still realized. So, so you can uh, save a redeploy cycle there. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, but let's take it a step forward, uh, even, even further, and uh, let's add a new component uh, on the fly. Like, uh, I see that there's a um, display all vets that displays all the uh, vets in the system. And what we want to do now is uh, display all pets instead. So it's a, it's a 404. Uh, we don't have anything ready for the uh, pets yet, but by using some uh, copy and paste programming here, um, I'm able to generate the uh, JSP real quick. I'll Don't try it at home. <laughs> copy paste programming is really, really bad. But it's, it's great for demos. It's done by professionals here. <laughs> so uh, I just copied this vets into pets. Uh, <laughs> let's go back. Uh, nothing has changed. Okay, let's dig around the code a little bit more. Uh, there's a class called clinic controller that has a method uh, vets handler. So this is what was used for the vets screen. So it returns a get vets. There's a simple JDPC clinic and it iterates over the vets here. I don't want to create a new uh, database table with the data. So what I'll do instead is that I'll, I'll create a new class. I will call this class mock clinic. And I'm going to use some more copy based programming. And now I have a mock clinic. Uh, it's a, a service. And well, there's a single method called get pets that will return a list of uh, last erect and dine out. Uh, I'll go to this clinic controller and auto wire this uh, an instance of this new class uh, into this clinic controller. And I will also create a new method called pets handler. And, and this does the request mapping for the pets and uh, it returns the pets from this mock clinic that was auto wired. Now I go back here and refresh and I have the page there. Uh, it's empty though. Uh, okay, let's go to this pets JSP. This is what usually happens when you copy paste Yes, but with Jerobo, he can fix it immediately. That's true. So this vet list, I'm gonna change to pet list. Whoa. Uh, the vet to pet. Uh, and I was thinking about this. Okay, pets don't have a first name, obviously. Um, they do have a name. So let me just take this away, go back. No speciality either. No specialities either. 
delete this, let's delete this, save, go back. And there I have last year X and Dyna. Woo! Woo! <laughs> uh, now when I check the uh, outputs of Tomcat, we see that there has been a, um, some more action going on. Uh, for example, you again showed the different integrations with there were tons of frameworks and app servers. Uh, here you can see that there's a uh, JRubble Spring plugin that has reconfigured the bean called Clinic Controller. This is uh, the uh, controller into which we injected the uh, uh, mock clinic instant. And well, it has said the JSPs have, have all also been reloaded, but so. so so the cool part is actually that, you know, just this one single bean has been reconfigured because that's the only thing that changed. So there was no like context refresh. Uh, it's just, uh, we, we always do the least, po we always apply the least possible change that can be done, right? So, and, and that, that, because of that, it's always instant. It's, it's always takes milliseconds. <sighs> yeah, I think that uh, was amazing. I guess the cool part is that uh, uh, you don't lose your session. Uh, let's say you need to log into your system, navigate to some page seven. Uh, you change some logic there, and uh, when you redeploy, you're, you're back to page one. Then you navigate to page seven, fill out your uh, whatever you're testing. So, so you save that time too. Um, one of my first projects were on uh, WebLogic 8. Uh, I could have a coffee and a cigarette when <laughs> I uh, was redeploying. Uh, of course, today the, the containers are faster, but it depends your uh, mileage and, of course, the size of the application. So, when the app size grows, your redeployment time grows too. Uh, this reloading is, uh, we're, we're talking about uh, hundreds of milliseconds. So, a cool part is that, you know, this is a commercial product, so it actually costs money, which hopefully your bosses will pay, but if you want to try it for yourself and if you like it and you know you have something you're working on on your own uh, then there is a thing called gerable social which is completely free so all you need to do is uh, register on social.gerable.com and basically you'll get a free license in exchange for uh, one tweet or one facebook post a month so there's a social development tool there's a social development tool i kid you not will there be a cloud development tool uh there just may be <laughs> <laughs> okay so um that was it about Gerable. Um, I hope you were uh, stunned and amazed and da now you're daz dazzled and confused. Uh, but well, truly, you know, it's, it's, it's a tool that, uh, you know, tens of thousands of developers love and use daily and it saves them a ton of time and, uh, and we keep improving it. So actually, uh, we, we have all kind of cool stuff coming in for okay. the next version. Uh, uh, Evgeny, what will happen to, uh, let's say you have an instance of a class and you add a method to that class. Will that instance have the new method? That instance will have the new method. So uh, the way Gerable works, it preserves all states, all the, all the objects you had before the update, you know, they're still there after the update, just they have new code. So, uh, but of course, if you add a new field, uh, then actually, the f you know, because we add a new field to an existing object, then, uh, uh, then, then actually uh, the, the, this field will be initialized to null. So, you know, you have to either somehow figure out how to reinitialize it. Or very often in, in a UI, you can go, go forward and backward. And, and, and then, of course, things like Spring, which wire things, then they, they will, no, the, the plugins will actually initialize things for us. Okay, but what about reflection? Reflection? <laughs> well, basically, you know, you could ask a lot of questions like that, but the thing is that everything, you know, with Gerable, we, 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 we did a horrible, horrible amount of work I kid you not, to ensure that everything will just work. You know, you just plug it in, and from, from your perspective, things just work. From our perspective, you know, we have to handle reflection, we have to handle the frameworks, we have to f handle the container. It's all fairly different. Are you showing my private screen there? I'm showing your private screen there, yes. <laughs> I was hoping that I can load uh, socialgerable.com, but, uh, but I don't think actually we have the intranets. Uh, the demo gods are... Nah, well... All right, so you know, we'll show it in the end, maybe it will load, uh, but meanwhile, uh, Tom can, uh, maybe we can switch to the next part of our talk, uh, which is actually liveable. So, uh, so when, we, when we created Gerable in, uh, you know, and, and actually Gerable was, uh, the first version of Gerable was released in 2007, so uh, this year is actually gonna, going to be our five year anniversary, uh, so you have no actual excuses why you're still not using it. 
And um, so when we did that, then you know, from the first days, people asked us, "But can we do the same thing in production?" You know, we have we have right now this horrible script or horrible list of steps to update production. We just want to do the same thing. We just want to throw there, you know, a war or a class file or whatever, and just have it updated. So and from the very beginning, we had this idea. You know, we should really port this terrible stuff to production. And so uh, last year we did that. So we released Liveable 1.0. And uh, one thing, you know, one thing we found out is that although we uh, we had uh, a lot of users starting to use it, a lot of guys starting to use it, and uh, you know, then very quickly we understood that uh, just having, you know, just having this kind of hot patching, which uh, Gerald does, it's not enough, because what people really, really want is just to have to, to install something in production that would do everything for them, right? So that they wouldn't have to worry at all, like because hot patching, you know, it has this. Uh, uh, it doesn't support like you know changing superclass. It has uh, the same this uh, thing I was talking about that if you add a filter uh, to a uh, a field to an instance, then it's initialized to null. So no, nobody wants to worry about that. Not developers, not uh, not the uh, sys, uh, not the operation staff. So uh, what we did is starting to think like, can we make it better? Can we actually you know make a product which will fully manage all updates and. Uh, Actually, we were supposed on Wednesday, we were supposed to release the Liveable 2.0. So uh, that unfortunately slipped, so we're releasing it on Monday. But, uh, but we're gonna demonstrate it to you today, and I think it's uh, pretty, pretty cool. So just to kind of give a little bit of context, then we did a survey, how do people uh, do production updates? And it turned out that the ma absolute majority of people just take the server offline in the off hours, like on the weekend or whatever, and you know, you know then the rest are uh, kind of in decreasing, uh, uh, do rolling restarts with lost sessions, and only a few, only a very few people actually do online updates. So our goal with Liveable is kind of to change that, uh, to change that graph, because Liveable makes uh, it so easy to make online updates that you will want to actually make updates during the day. That you will want them because you know all your staff is in. You know you don't want to do them in off hours. You don't want to wait until the evening or the weekend. Because if, if something happens, then during the day, everybody is in, so everybody can fix it. You can roll it back immediately. You can start fixing it. Or, but in the evening, it's actually kind of a problem. So uh, liveable updates are online. So they're, the users don't see a thing. They're automated. Uh, they're transactional, which means that the whole update as it succeeds or it doesn't succeed. They're 100% reversible, which means you always have a panic button. And they're also uh, minor updates are instant. And we're going to talk about the major update. So once again, I don't want to have a lot of slides, and uh, our resident geek here is going to show you how it actually works. The resident geek uh, did a uh, morning checkout from the source repository and saw 19 change sets. So we, we're on cutting edge here, people. So, so I'm a bit worried here, but uh, when I was going through the demos, everything was working. So. We also we sacrificed the goat in the morning. No, we did not, but uh, sometimes this does make the demo gods happier. You didn't. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I killed the previous servers, uh, and I'm going to find my live rebel. So, so how, how do you install it? Uh, so there's a folder called live rebel after you extract the zip archive. OK. And uh, you, you put it on your server. Windows, Linux, or Mac, uh, or something else, if you prefer, that runs Java. Plan 9. Plan 9, I think, doesn't support Java. Ah, oh, damn it. Um, OK, so there are a bunch of folders there. Uh, I'm going to go to the bin folder. And there's a uh, command called LR command center sh. And I'm going to run this. So that does what? It starts up the uh, command center for Live Rebel, uh, and the command center is like this uh, management console, this uh, orchestration uh, uh, mastermind. Uh, we call it the command center after the StarCraft, you know, turn command center, if you know. Who has played StarCraft? Raise your hands who has played StarCraft. Okay. Well, you guys know what we're talking about. We're considering to call it the hive, but well. Um, OK, so, so this is what it looks like. It's a web console uh, where you can manage your applications and servers and uh, other stuff. Uh, and I'm going to add my first server. Oh, uh, OK, I'll just delete my two servers, and then I'll add the server. 
very good. Uh, okay, add server. Uh, so how this works is that there's a uh, agent installer embedded into this command center that you download to your uh, app server, for example, Tomcat or JBoss or WebLogic or WebSphere or did I say faster? Um, okay, so here's my Tomcat folder. Just in case, let me make sure that, okay, I'll delete the previous one, sorry. Now I'm ready. Okay, so I'm gonna download the jar file. I'm gonna execute the uh, installer. No, nope. yeah. <laughs> yes, the CEO. <laughs> Still knows his Java. Still knows his Java. Okay, so uh, what it did was that it was able to figure out that there's Tomcat here. Uh, it uh, created a new folder uh, called LR, LR Agent. It configured certain properties and uh, it's telling me to run uh, a wrapper script b uh, before I run my like regular uh, Tomcat startup. So let me just copy this paste and enter. Uh, okay, so Tomcat is starting up, but there's a wrapper uh, before this. And you saw the liveable agent yeah. also being enabled. So that agent is actually the one that, you know, sits in the application the, and, the main and idea, does magic. Yeah, uh, yeah it does magic. Uh, <laughs> the, the main idea for uh, such an installation method is uh, just to make sure that uh, uh, we, we don't, uh, like, change your... Uh, installation of your web sphere or, or anything like that, so that we, we just wrap around this. And, and secondly, to make it super easy, like you, you just need to execute the jar file. Yeah, so we worked really hard uh, to make sure, you know, you have your existing environment. We don't want to, to, you to do any changes there. You just basically, you know, it takes you about five, 10 minutes to download the, download one jar file, run it there, that's it, you got it ready, right? So you, you didn't have, there's, there's no changes you need to do to your environment. That's, that's the cool part. I followed these steps and restarted the server. And do you actually run the server? I did. Let me think. Did I change Wi-Fi? Hmm. Is the server saying like that it can connect or something? Uh, let me check the log. Later you'll, you'll find out that it was planned. <laughs> Okay, let's see. I started the weird build. I downloaded the, okay, let me just check the configuration for the correct IP and. Uh, you, you didn't, yeah, you didn't actually delete the LR agent. Was that uh, necessary? Uh, it's not necessary, but, okay. Like the, one of the biggest problem with Liverable is that uh, because um, when you do uh, demo locally, then it actually uses the local IP and it keeps changing in the Wi-Fi. So I, I was also running into that problem before. I just hope this is the reason. <laughs> so, let me think. Well, I think the quickest way to... Try to delete the LR yeah, yeah, I just clean okay. my... Uh, Recursive as well, oh, okay. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Try again. And at, at the same time, I also have another Tomcat configured here, Tomcat 2, where I just start this up and this one, this one, I didn't uh, like overwrite the stuff. Okay. So. I knew we should have sacrificed that job. Ooh, see, now we have three stop servers. Remember when I told you that let's do it with a stable version? <laughs> Okay, but no worries, I have the stable version here. I think Yevgeny will entertain you while I'll uh, launch that one. Okay, so here's a joke. Uh, do you know why the orange stopped? Because it ran out of juice. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not a comedian, I don't know. Uh, well, uh, so that's unfortunate. Um, that happened to me, so once actually during a talk, uh, I remember Eclipse stopped compiling and 
that, that was fun. It took me like also five minutes sweating. Like it really, you know, this, I don't know if you ever sh were showing demo to a customer and then just something doesn't work suddenly. Um, so that happens to speakers all the time because you know, you're so nervous before, the, uh, before I talk. So obviously you're doing something wrong and then it just doesn't work out. And what happened then is I think I had this build it automatically and checked, but it took me like five minutes to find that out. And uh, meanwhile I thought, like, oh my God, our product doesn't work at all. Uh, everything, yeah, the, the sky is falling down. Oh my God. So what do we have here? Keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Spain is nice. Uh, I've seen mostly hotel in the conference center, but yesterday uh, I actually went out in the city and I saw the city. I saw two blocks. Yes, there was the first block and then there was the second block. Yeah! Where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Estonia. Okay, like so I'm, I'm back to a stable version. Uh, it's, it, it's a snapshot though, but uh, this, is, this is like a working version that you don't check out from a hotel uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and then see 19 chain sets. Okay, so this is the um, command center that we were talking about and the servers have connected to this command center. There are two servers, they have the same IP because uh, they're running locally here. Um, and I think let's, let's start by deploying an application there. I'm gonna add an application, upload and it's called LR Demo. How, how were we on the time? Sounds good, don't worry. We okay. started at uh, 50, I think, so. I'm not worrying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm uploading a couple of, couple of versions here, so uh, just to uh, speed up the process a bit. So these are WAR files, it's, it's called LR Demo. There's version one, version two, version three. Um, and uh, it's actually a, a network, like, application, so if, if you have uh, uh, a laptop, I guess you can open it up and in a, in a second join. Okay, so I chose the application and I'm gonna add a deployment here. I'm gonna select the two servers that I have in the cluster and I'll start off by uh, uh, version one. And for the context path, I'm gonna use LR demo and I'm gonna deploy the application. That was one fine build. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so let me go to LR demo. So what happened in the back background was that uh, this uh, command center pushed the archive to Tomcat and uh, deployed the application. Right now here I'm, I'm trying to access it, access this from a load balancer. I see that the load balancer ha is taking some time, so I can check the application from the, uh, uh, without the load balancer. I'll just, I just might need to uh, uh, restart my Apache. Yeah. <laughs> Usually when, when one thing goes wrong, next thing is will follow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, the demo goes a different language today. It is a bit slow, like there, there are certain styles missing and there's an echo coming back. Okay. So somebody, I think somebody's just making that sound on purpose. Um, okay, never mind. Uh, I can't access it from the uh, load balancer, but I'm sure. I can try. I'll use this one. Okay. That should be good. That's really good. Uh, can you guys hear him? Okay. So if you want to join the chat, the, the URL isn't as simple as uh, I thought it will be or would be, but there's the IP, whoever can see this. It's on port 8080 and LR demo. 
I will see when you guys check in here. Okay, it's a, it's a simple chat uh, behind, there's a ready server. It's deployed to two Tomcats and the load balancer is for a reason not doing its uh, job, but I will give up on it in a second. So supposedly it's, it's, it's working. Okay, um, I'll go to the command center here. Uh, not here, that's the old chat. Here, okay. And uh, I'll run an update on these servers. So uh, I want to upgrade to version two. Uh, it says that it's compatible with hot patching. So remember when uh, Evgeny was explaining that JRebel isn't a perfect tool. Like you do have to redeploy uh, if, if you're doing certain type of changes, like class hierarchy changes. Um, but well, you can't take that risk in production. <laughs> like uh, if, if you made a change that the uh, hot patching doesn't support. So there's a binary uh, uh, compare that takes two, two archives and make sure that the changes are supported. And in this demo, I have these fully compatible. So it's, it's easy to continue. Uh, I will show the differences. For example, there's a uh, new method in a class. There's a new field, uh, change methods, new methods. And there's a, a lot of different icon files. So, so this is the difference between version one and version two. Before I click this uh, update, uh, I'll also go back to the chat and then show something. So when I enter a smiley, oh, maybe this is the, okay. So, so here's the uh, smiley. Um, let me run the update now and, and, and see the new features. So uh, I'm gonna check a checkbox that says that to manually resume incoming requests. This means that when I run the update as this hot patching is uh, a bit too fast. And, and let's say you want to up update your third party services, either a uh, database or uh, some web service. And you need some time when uh, to up update that service. And uh, we have this checkbox to make sure that during that period, uh, all incoming requests are paused. By pause, I mean, depending on your browser, you'll, you'll see an hour class or you'll see a spinning wheel or something. Yeah, so, so to give you some context, like, you know, to be sure that the update's always saved during using hot patching, we generally, if you press update with hot patching, then we will always uh, stop all the requests. So we wait until current request complete, we will pause the incoming request and do the update on the cold machine. So just to, you know, to avoid any kind of trouble with concurrency and things like that. So mm -hmm. it's always is, uh, and this is just a feature yeah. of that. So you didn't actually put the checkbox. Uh, I didn't, <laughs> uh, I just explained the checkbox. Like, okay. uh, so what happened in the background was that it uh, prepares the, ver uh, it uploads the archives, then it prepares for the version change. And this is actually where the, uh, version change, change itself happened. And now when I go back. So it took three seconds. <laughs> uh, I see that somebody came online, but as you can see, my session ID here, which is my username too, has stayed the same. So the idea is that the end users, so uh, if they don't lose their session, they're filling out a form or uh, doing some work in the application and you run the update, uh, they're gonna stay logged in and they, uh, they won't see a thing. So, so this is the uh, benefit of this hot patching. But as this hot patching has limitations and y you can't rely on this on, on every change because maybe the, the change is such a major, uh, then we have other update strategies also available. Um, let's see, what are they? So there, there's a thing called rolling restarts. Maybe Evgeny, you want to explain this term. So uh, that, that was, uh, rolling restarts is the main uh, innovation in the Liverable 2.0. Uh, we, we understood that, you know, most of the, how, how most of the updates are applied today in production is that you have a f few servers and you have a load balance in front, so, and you take, you know, one server at a time from the load balancer, apply the, you know, take the, the server, take the application server down, install the new version of the application, take the applica application server up, and then just uh, attach it back into the load balancer. Uh, 
uh, this is great, but this is a manual, you know, it's, a, it's a great because it's safe and it uh, actually keeps the application online during the update, but it's largely a manual process and, you know, sessions are hard to control. So what we did, we, complete, we fully automated that process. What Liveable does is that it turns every single application server that is started with an agent, it actually tor tor turns it into a mini load balancer. So that, that application server, now even if the application server, you know, will be down for the update, then the, the, the daemon or the agent that runs in front of it will be able to intercept requests and will be able to uh, send them to different servers, uh, which means that, you know, from the point of view of the load balance and from the point of view of the system administrator and so on, all the servers are up at all times, but behind the scenes, some magic is happening so that, you know, requests and sessions are redirected to different servers, which means that you can just press a button and the servers will one, one by one update automatically. And again, this process is, you know, fully automated, fully reversible and transactional, right? So let's see how it works. But uh, can't you force the timeout? Okay, let's, uh, so the offline update is uh, kind of the last resort, so uh, and mainly it's meant for when you update the database and the database is uh, not uh, backwards or forwards compatible, right? So there's too much difference, so the old version can end, of the application can't work with the new version of the uh, database and vice versa. So in that case, you want to take all the servers offline and obviously Liveable allows to do that as well. Okay, so um, and to compare the, the this adapter services, uh, so it looks like you don't need rejection, uh, end users need nothing. Uh, running, running the replay. Oh. Yeah, we, <laughs> that was when great. stuff goes wrong, it goes wrong. Uh, and, and with the running restarts, the same. The end user doesn't see anything, but it takes time for the uh, session trains to happen. And with offline updates, this is the uh, worst scenario. Users will see downtime. So I'm going to click update now. I'm going to go to my time alarm. And my server is already down. Oh, you, you started the offline, yeah. Yeah, I, I, but I the did. cool part is that you know we also pause all the incoming requests, so actually they get recorded during the offline update. And if it's not too long, then uh, they actually will uh, play, back. Stay, play back. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, it's it's waiting until all, all requests are paused, so um, the update will take longer than the the hot patching. No, no more jokes. Uh, so you remember that orange? <laughs> Estonia. Estonia is like freezing. It's minus twenty there. <sighs> Nothing much more to tell. <laughs> you know, they're, uh, the the polar bears roam the streets. So. Okay, very, so, so, so you see things are happening like, and, and uh, the, the cool part again that it's fully automated, there's even a cancel button on top. If you saw, so at any time you can cancel it and it will actually start reversing the update. So, and that's uh, great because you can even do this thing that you update uh, just a few servers at once, so like one server at a time, see if things are working and then if something doesn't work, then you can always roll it back. And you can do that using, uh, you know, either strategies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me go here, boom, oops to call for, for version three. So the idea is that when you when your update uh, ha has some uh, bug in it and, and you want to like roll back and uh, here the point is to demo that we can go back to version two uh, with hot patching uh, in, a, in a really quick manner. Yes, and so yeah. So one of, the, one of the biggest issues in production is that you know, everybody is afraid that we'll deploy something and it will break everything, right? So that's the biggest fear. That's the reason for all these checks and balances and why, you know, very often you deploy to production once a month or once a quarter or whatever, or once a week at the very best. And with Liveable, it's a very cool thing is that you have a different kind of checks and balances where if something goes wrong, then you can actually always take it back, right? So the update is so fast and it's so, and it's completely non-disruptive for the users. So if you want to, you know, so you can actually speed up uh, the, uh, uh, the updates uh, w way more. So we have a few, like a few customers who use it very aggressively and one of them is actually doing 2,000 updates a month, right? And, and that's, that's pretty cool because what they do is just, basically they say if our, you know, if our changes have uh, passed through the automated and, and maybe, I don't think they have manual testing, but uh, they just have the automated testing. So uh, we're just gonna deploy it to production and 
they're just gonna deploy to one server first and then like roll out to the next. And if there's something happens, they're just gonna roll back or they're gonna, uh, you know, deploy a fix right away. And that's kind of like uh, very cool because, you know, things anyway will break. So what you w really want to have, failure, you know, th there's this uh, very nice talk, I think it's called, called failure happens. Uh, and uh, the thing with failure is that what you want to have is a ways to, you know, mitigate failure. And Liveable gives you these tools and also obviously a, a audit trail. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, maybe you can uh, speak about the audit trail too. So there's an audit trail. Anyway, everything you do, it's, it's the same thing. Like, you know, we, we really want to uh, cater to our users. And so everything you do on the server is recorded. Uh, actually, in the current version, uh, the UI isn't still uh, completely uh, finished in this part, but uh, the, the history, will, every single like event will actually also be reversible. So there'll be a kind of like a rollback button next to every event. And, and, and that's kind of, again, a cool thing that you both have an audit trail and then you also have a way to roll back any event which you don't like. So, uh, so, so for operations guys, this is really cool because they have full transparency in what, what versions are deployed where, what happened, and they have full control of you know, how to roll out Java applications. Because as far as I've talked to most of the you know, system administrators, operations guys, they all hate Java applications because they have no idea what happens inside them. And this tool actually gives them a lot of uh, transparency and control over uh, what's going on in production. Do you want to continue with the slides? Um, well, actually, I, I, I don't have a lot of slides. So the demo gods were uh, kind of angry today, so we didn't uh, manage to demo everything we wanted. But uh, the thing is that, bo you know, so I guess uh, it was 40 something minutes. Um, so, so the cool part is that both those tools, Gerbil and Liverable, uh, they both are really easy to install. Uh, they take basically minutes to install, and this is something we worked really hard on. Uh, they both have a great UI, or in case of uh, Gerbil, uh, kind of a <laughs> mostly lack of a UI, which is uh, the best UI you can have actually, is when you don't see the tool at all, so it's just quietly, silently, you know, doing uh, things for you in the background. Uh, and uh, in case of in case of Liverable, uh, we have this very nice uh, dashboard from which you can control everything. And I really urge you to try them out and see for yourself that it you know you can just put them in your existing environment, in your existing infrastructure. You don't have to do any changes. You don't have to commit to anything, and you can remove them at any moment. But I believe that if you just try them out, you will see that you know they, they they're going to make you happier, right? So. With Gerable, we've seen again and again that uh, developers are just really happy to use it because besides all the time that it saves, it's just, it just creates a much better workflow where you just change things and you can immediately see the results. So we kind of have this very agile way of you know test and see and test and see and test and see, which uh, which is much better suitable for the human mind than kind of these constant interactions or interruptions or batching the things together. And uh, with, with Liverable, one of the best things we saw what uh, both developers and operations are happy about is uh, exactly that they can deploy during the day. So it's actually a big thing because uh, first of all, you know, it's just that means that you don't have to stay up evenings or weekends or whatever. And second of all, it actually means that uh, when, when something goes wrong, that everybody is available. Whereas before, you know, usually there's this one guy, one unfortunate guy deploying in the evening or something or on the weekend, and then something goes wrong, and then he's like, oh my God, I don't know. Oh, somebody committed this bug, and I don't know what happens, and like, and he, he has to, you know, start either reverting the version, and there's usually, you know, there's no like one button reverse, reversing, so there's again like some series of steps or scripts or whatever to reverse the version, and uh, it's just not nice. So we, we, see, we see that people, you know, our goal as a company is to make people happier. You know, everything else comes after that. So, uh, and if you have any questions, uh, we'll be very happy to answer them. And there's a free three months durable license if you go to that URL. Or, yep. I just wanted to say, if uh, Lambda gods did this, for example, um, I need to uh, upgrade the raw file, and I have to give some specific date that I will upgrade. And in that case, I can tell to the GitHub repository, hey, give me a new Lambda gods update, and then uh, I can give you the raw data. So, so. so so the question was uh, if uh, a, like, it's actually kind of two questions uh, in one, but A, is Liverable scriptable? Is it possible to script it? And B, uh, what, you know, how, do, uh, do, how to do the database up to date? 
So um, this is a very good question, actually. I'm, I'm sorry that we didn't uh, show that. Uh, so first of all, Liveable is fully scriptable. Uh, it has a command line, which so absolutely every action that you can do through UI, you can do also through command line. And it also have, if you're like, you know, if you're more of a, uh, not a scripting guy, if you're more of a developer, then it also have a REST API, which again, absolutely everything you can do through command line or through UI, you can also do through REST API. And uh, through, for database update, you absolutely can write this uh, exactly the script, so you can say like, okay, here's the version, so update and then pause, you know, uh, distribute the update and then pause the application, and then you can run the database script update, and then you can say, okay, resume now, and you know, it's, it's just gonna run through the script and it's gonna be predictable. And another way to run a database update is uh, to do it manually, so basically, you know, you go through UI, you pr again press this update, and you, but you check this box which uh, pauses the user updates, and then you just go, you know, to some console or, or database uh, management console or something and just uh, send the update out. So bo both ways are fine if you want to do it like manually or if you want to do it like through a script. And uh, we definitely in the future through UI also want to provide kind of like an, you know, an extension point for you to run a script from the UI if you want to. So, but at the moment it's just uh, you go from the command line. Yes, sir? Uh, it, uh, so the question was, does it work for standalone applications? Unfortunately, it only works uh, for Java EE applications. They don't have to be uh, web applications. They can be, you know, A to B applications. They can be some services. But at the moment, it's uh, meant still mainly for uh, web applications. Well, Jarable obviously does work with standalone applications. Uh, Jarable is uh, more uh, on the, you know, Jarable works with all Java applications, Liveable since we need to have so much infrastructure that it's meant for web applications. Yes, Seth? Okay, so you're asking like what about that if you redeploy then there's out of memory? Okay, so the very cool part about both uh, Jarable and Liveable uh, is that they actually, did, you know, they don't suffer from this out of memory error. Uh, the reason being is that typically what happens during re redeploy is that the whole application instance is taken down and a whole new instance is created. And it's all down like, it's all done inside the JVM memory. So very often the first instance leaks, so it kind of dangles in the memory. And when you do a few redeploys and eventually you have like five or six of them and, then, and they're big, so that's when uh, the out of memory happens. What Jarable and Liveable do, in, like, in, like uh, Liveable and hot patching obviously, uh, is that they actually update one class at a time. Uh, so they, first of all, they do very small changes and second of all, they actually release uh, the old changes, uh, you know, when the new changes are applied. So there's, a, there's no actual memory leak. Uh, when, of course, and obviously when we do this uh, rolling restarts or offline update, and because the whole server is taken down and then the whole server is started up again, then it's completely, you know, clean bill of health. So no memory leaks could have happened because we, and this is by the way the reason why we don't, you know, we don't, uh, we, we, uh, I actually have a talk which is called, uh, do you really get class orders? And there I talk for like half an hour why cl using class orders for updating applications is a very wrong usage of class orders. They're not meant for that. It's really easy to leak them and, that, and, and uh, out of memory error is like a very, very common one. Yeah, uh, Jenny, but what about perm gen? Well, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's the same thing. Out of memory, it's just a type of memory that leaks. Uh, so there's a permanent generation, there's a, a tenor generation, there's a survivor generation and, uh, and they all, uh, you know, uh, the memory is leaked actually throughout all generations. Just the perm ge permanent generation is often the smallest one and it leaks the fastest. Uh, in any case, like uh, Liveable, uh, like one of the goals for Liveable was exactly uh, to uh, compensate, you know, to, to, to do, provide an alternative to the redeploying that wouldn't leak memory. So that was a very important goal for us. Um, sorry, sir, you also wanted to ask something? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear very well. Uh, can you speak a bit louder or come closer? <laughs> uh, we are using Hibernate implementations. Okay, Hibernate implementations.
So for hot patching, uh, yeah, it might be, I mean, it might be an issue because then the, the application doesn't start up, so the annotations might not apply. It's an interesting question. Uh, we probably need to actually provide some API or some hook for that uh, to actually run a, a, a Hibernate. Obviously, for rolling restarts, it's not a problem because there the application actually uh, starts up from scratch. Uh, I wonder if there's like a simple solution for that. Maybe just uh, have a dummy server where you just, you know, just, uh, which nobody uses, but where you deploy the application. I, I mean, just like as a temporary solution, you can have, uh, just deploy the application there just so that the uh, annotations would also run. You can also do that from Liverable completely. You can just have a, you know, completely some dummy stupid Tomcat, which nobody uses, just undeploy, deploy, and uh, it, will, it will actually give the same effect. So. So for Liverable, um, no, no, not exactly that you just drop in a jar. Uh, well you, always, you, know, you always have to go through this central console. Like you always have to drop that uh, jar or whatever or, uh, into the central console and then still press a button. And the reason being is that we want to record all events so, and so that they would be reversible because otherwise it's hard for us to uh, make a difference if that was like something intended or if that was something accidental. So we want you at least to you know, press a button somewhere so that we would know where to deploy it and so on and just to avoid accidents. There is kind of a hacky edit mode as well for Liverable where you can just go to the server and actually edit something inline and then kind of, but, but even that uh, in the end you save and it creates a new version for the same reason so that we could track like what versions are deployed where and, and you can actually then deploy that version to other servers as well, right? So, so um, yeah, so, so it, it, you know, it, it's uh, definitely, there are solutions for your questions. Uh, for the annotations one, it maybe is a little bit of a workaround right now, but uh, uh, it's, it's all um, solvable. Uh, Are there okay. any more questions? And to end this with style, I think my iTunes has crashed also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So the demo guys were really, really angry today. Oh well. Uh, I'd like to make one final comment. There was a uh, URL on the screen that Tom put up. It's uh, for a free three month license of JRebel. This is the last time that we're offering three month licenses, so everyone at Spring gets to take advantage of it. Uh, from now on, we're not doing three month licenses, so if you wanna come uh, see the URL, come by our booth. And also, please keep in mind that at 6.30 tonight, we are having a beer party in the cafeteria it's not cocktails like the Atlassian cool dudes, but it's just normal beer uh, where we can continue to talk uh, geek and uh, have some cold brew. And I think this is the example of it. Yeah, th thank you very much, guys. Uh, if you have uh, other questions, then I'll be in the booth and Thomas as well, and we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for coming.